Hello everybody and welcome to another Gear Talk and this time I'm talking about the digital camera, the new Pentax KF. Before we begin, as usual, if you want to support the channel, please put a like, subscribe and share with your friends. If you want to do something more, check out my website and you can find the books and you can find them in the links down there in the description. You can find Lasting Photographs, that is a novel based on photography, very good reviews online. Uh, the Photography Manual, everything you need to know about photography, film or digital. And Inkjet Fine Art Printing, this is fantastic if you want to learn to create fine art in jet prints. It's everything you need to know about that. First of all, a couple of disclaimer. I got this camera from FOA, the Italian importer of Pentax, to test it. The second disclaimer is that I never had a Pentax K70. Uh, I see online that there are a lot of uh, discussion about uh, how this is an improvement from the Pentax K70 and so on, but I never tried the Pentax K70, so I just talk about the Pentax KF. This video won't be just a first impression. Uh, I got the camera, it was a very nice day, some uh, very strong lights, uh, just note, and I decided to just go out and take some pictures without worrying too much. So what I did was uh, I set the camera uh, as I usually prefer and uh, was very easy and intuitive. The first thing that struck me was uh, how much easy is the menu in Pentax. It's uh, very simple, it doesn't feel like a smartphone, it's just very very um, easy to use, it's not uh, with a lot of submenus and all these kind of things or a lot of graphics, it's very easy, intuitive. Something I love about Pentax in general that they have uh, user settings and uh, that's something I don't know why is not common on every camera and every brand because it's great. You can set a user setting exactly as you want. So what I did for this test was to go ISO as low as possible. I was in automatic with uh, aperture priority uh, for some moment and it is uh, just nice to use it here. Uh, you can set up all the shooting modes here, that's very nice but uh, I used in upper to priority and in program. I wanted to test uh, how this camera works in automatic. It's, uh, uh, you have the camera, you use it, can you trust it? So the first impression for me is that I do it with all the cameras. So I said this with uh, eliminating noise reduction, eliminating all the sharpening, eliminating all these kind of things. Um, I decided to shoot RAW and I used the DNG format. Pentax is something really great that gives you the possibility to use the proprietary PEF format and use the standard DNG. I don't know if uh, at the quality level I will do the test when I do the deep test of this camera, if uh, at the quality level it's better to use the PEF or DNG. But what I love about uh, the option to use the DNG format is that I can take a camera like this to test, for example, I don't have to update all my software to the latest version to be able to see and elaborate the files. So I use the DNG, I, won't, I will worry about what I need to do with the software later. Right now I just took the DNG, used it in Capture One and it was great. So that's another setting that I did. Uh, I didn't care much about the settings because shooting RAW is something that uh, uh, doesn't matter too much how you set the camera. Something that I said is the one of the most beautiful features of this camera that is the image stabilizer. The image stabilizer uh, gives you almost uh, five uh, stops of uh, anti-shaking, it's 4.5 I think, and uh, does really a great job. So you have uh, the sensor that shifts around and it uh, stabilizes the image, is not very common on reflex cameras, so that's great. Um, and I set up that. The rest was all the zero. I, di I didn't care about the rest. Uh, something that uh, I like about this camera is that you can get the display, and yes, you can use it for selfies or these kind of things that is kind of uh, important, but what I like is that I can take the display, put it like that, and the camera is closed. I don't have the display. Uh, for me, it's important to 
um, turn off the display and uh, be direct and if you want to understand why I mean it a little exercise here I did uh, some videos with uh, exercise to become better photographer in the COVID time so it was COVID compliant something to do at home and you can check it here and one of them is just cover your LCD so I set the camera this way I covered the LCD and I went out and took the pictures first thing that is really really impressive about this camera is the quality of the reflex viewfinder uh, it's a real pentaprism it's not the mirror pentaprism so a mirror uh, I don't know exactly how they call it when it is not real pentaprism but most of the camera they have this other system with mirrors this is a real pentaprism and uh, you can really see it and it's impressive how much I missed something like that is uh, some years that I use uh, with digital I use mirrorless in two ways uh, with the EVF and that's uh, something that uh, I really don't like the electronic viewfinder and uh, uh, I use uh, um, the OVF but this is a rangefinder style is not a reflex so to be able to see through the lens without the filter of the EVF it's fantastic the good thing in this world is that there are different people with different tastes I have some uh, friends that are not uh, they like the EVF they like to see the interpretation that the camera gives to the sheen in the viewfinder I don't like that I like to see the reality I like to see how I imagine the reality and I like to transfer that thing that vision that is my real vision into a, a file into an image I don't like to have a filter to have a camera that shows me how the camera wants to take the picture if I have an EVF I feel that I'm adapting to the camera instead of uh, the camera adapting to me so I really love the uh, pentaprism I really love the optical viewfinder uh, that's something that uh, I really didn't realize how much I missed it until I got this camera and test this camera um, and by the way it's a great it's great viewfinder it's uh, almost a, it's hundred percent I don't know if it's a little bit more or less but it's hundred percent of the sheen and it's very bright and uh, also the focusing screen it's really uh, nice because it shows enough uh, the areas that are out of focus so uh, if you want to use manual lenses you can use them and it's easy to focus another thing that I love about Pentax is the uh, compatibility with all the lenses produced by Pentax ever so even the M42 lenses can be used with an adapter so uh, every K lens that was produced by Pentax can be used on this camera and that's a fantastic thing I have uh, a lot of Pentax lenses from the film er era uh, and I like the fact that I can use them on this camera if I want so my impression was uh, kind of uh, great here you can see the pictures and I decided uh, as all I always do when I test the camera I decided to get uh, subjects that were difficult and I mean you have the mountain with the snow and the sun in the back it is just behind a very thin layer of, of clouds so there's a lot of contrast in the sheen um, you can see other uh, photographs that they took uh, where I tried to put uh, a test uh, the exposure meter when uh, the dark subject was uh, uh, prominent in the sheen and when the snow was prominent in the sheen and so on so it was uh, quite good uh, something that uh, I discovered is that you have mm, to expose you can use a spot meter uh, a spot setting on the meter you can use an average uh, an average way uh, to expose the image or you can use the matrix that I, it was called matrix I don't know from what brands years ago uh, but it's on a different zone system uh, for the different zone systems there's something that I don't like too much but that's common to every camera right now that is that it concentrates too much 
on the um, exposure value, value of the focus point. So if you do, for example, portrait is fantastic because you're sure it's always the exposure is on the face and that's what you want. If you're doing landscape, if the focus area is on a very dark area, it tends to overexpose. If it's on a very white area, it tends to underexpose. So uh, after I did this test, I tried a few um, pictures with the, just the average exposure, not these complex things, and I find much better for uh, landscape and this kind of uh, photographs. You can judge the pictures are not uh, highly artistic pictures, were just uh, some quick test, and uh, they came out really, really good. Uh, there was no need to do a lot of uh, post-producing, uh, the RAW file came out pretty well. So, my first impression is absolutely great and uh, the 85 1.4 really was fantastic. The 31, good lens, uh, um, it has some uh, problem of flare with the light uh, coming in, if the straight light coming in, but uh, it's really nice lens. And the 50mm 1.4, I still have to try it and I want to test it with all the other 50mm that I tested in this video here. So, great camera, mm, good impression. Next time I will do a deep test and I am curious to try the pixel shift image that uh, I want to see the quality of that told me that is really great uh, and I want to see other features uh, uh, for this camera. Uh, this camera is a great entry level for the Pentax system. If you put uh, accessories like the GPS, you can have uh, things that are only Pentax like the star tracking uh, with, the, with the sensor and so on. So it's really uh, a very nice camera to enter in the Pentax system. And as I said, entering in the Pentax system means to also have access, access to all the old lenses, all the vintage lenses that you can find around uh, in the used market, uh, very, very good price sometimes. So that's uh, an option that is uh, kind of very, very nice. Without an adapter, you just get the lens and put them here. So what, uh, this is what I liked about the camera. What I didn't like, uh, it's really not much, but uh, there's the fact that when you get the camera in the settings, uh, the standard settings uh, from the factory, it seems like Christmas tree. And I mean, there's LED light around the shutter button. There are all these kind of things that probably are useful in some situation, but uh, uh, for me it was okay. It's nice, it's fun, but turn them off. Another thing that I don't uh, like much about this camera, but you must must take into account that the fact it is an entry level, is that the single uh, SD card. And uh, I like the double SD card for the reason, one for backup, and sure, it's uh, something that, uh, that is important. And when I do something that is uh, a job that is uh, unique or something like that. I like to have two cards uh, with uh, uh, right in the row on the camera. But I also, uh, when I test, uh, when I make some tests uh, on lenses, on cameras, these kind of things, uh, a lot of time I like to just have the row plus JPG written onto different cards. I the, here I don't know if there's an option to write row and JPG on the same card, but I like the two card thing. Uh, that's so something that is a kind of a little limit of this camera, but again, is uh, on the website right now, eight hundred forty something dollar. So is not uh, a uh, top level camera with all the professional features. Is a fantastic entry level with uh, much more than uh, you can uh, need and think. This said, I really like. Uh, this camera the first impression was great and uh, next videos i don't know probably will be a couple of weeks there's christmas in the middle so it's a kind of a crazy moment but uh, uh, i will take 
detailed test of the camera. I will test different ISO settings. Uh, I will test the sharpness, the, um, the shift, uh, the pixel shift uh, system in the camera, and all these kind of things. So, stay tuned if you want to see a deep review of this camera. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.